Over the years, many of Mario's friends and enemies have gone off and had their own successful franchises. Luigi had Luigi's Mansion, Wario was in Wario Land and WarioWare, and Peach, well, she got a pretty awesome DS game. And then there's Toad, a lovable mushroom man who's appeared in Mario games for almost as long as Mario himself. Although he was playable in many of Mario's outings over the past few decades, it wasn't until 2014 when Toad finally got his own game, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. It's been a few years since the game was released on the Wii U, and since then, the game has been re-released onto the Nintendo Switch and the 3DS in hopes of giving Toad a second chance to try and shine in his own game. And so, I figured now would be the most perfect time to go ahead and re-complete Captain Toad Treasure Tracker for Nintendo Switch. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist, New Game Plus, a show in which I am recompleting the first 120 games from the original Completionist lineup. For more information on that, you can click or tap the link in the description down below. So I don't really have a Toad hat or a Captain Toad hat or anything that resembles Toad, but I do have a Mario Odyssey hat and that kind of resembles the change with what we have with Captain Toad Treasure Tracker on the Nintendo Switch and 3DS. Now today we're playing the Nintendo Switch version as that is the closest that represents the Wii U version. And I thought, you know what? Why not dress for the occasion? Because there's now Mario Odyssey levels in the game. Whatever, we're gonna jump right into Captain Toad. Let's begin. Yes. Before Captain Toad Treasure Tracker was released, this headlamp wearing Toad had quite the following. Captain Toad was originally the leader of a side group of characters known as the Toad Brigade in the Super Mario Galaxy series. Despite the fact that he helped Mario find a couple of power stars throughout the games, his role was pretty minimal when compared to the other characters in the game. In 2013, Nintendo had announced that their flagship Mario game for the then console, the Wii U, man, that feels weird to talk about the Wii U in past tense. Whew would be known as Super Mario 3D World. They also had announced that there'd be four playable characters, Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad. But if you thought it was this speedy blue Toad that would steal the spotlight and get his own series, then you, my friend, would be dead wrong. Super Mario 3D World contained a series of side challenges known as the Adventures of Captain Toad. Throughout the game, there'd be puzzle-based levels in which a player would solely control Captain Toad. Captain Toad's levels were based on a similar design philosophy to that of Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine. The levels were known as Hakoniwa, or Mini Garden Worlds. You'd explore a box-like structure in search of collectibles until you eventually located everything. At the time, fans praised these levels so much that the Super Mario 3D World development team joked about the idea of making a game based exclusively on these levels. And then, just one year later, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker was announced. The game received praise upon its release, but unfortunately, due to the poor sales of the Wii U, the game did not sell too well. Of course, this was during Nintendo's Wii U era, and it was a pretty dark era. Nowadays, Nintendo is in a bit of a renaissance with the Nintendo Switch. And with this new era came a new Nintendo motto. When in doubt, give the game a second chance on the Switch. Nintendo knew that Captain Toad couldn't be so quickly defeated on the Wii U. And so, much like several other Wii U games, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker made its way onto the Nintendo Switch, as well as the Nintendo 3DS. But today, the version that I'm gonna be recompleting is on the Nintendo Switch. I initially completed this game back when it first came out on the Nintendo Wii U, and at that time, I remember enjoying the game. Although I did have a few complaints about the overall presentation of the game, I found it to be a fun and relatively easy adventure. So, suffice to say, I'm expecting things to be a breeze this time around as well. 
well. First off, like any sort of Mario game, I'll need to get from point A to point B on each of the game's levels. I need to save Toadette on some adventures, but sometimes I need to save Toad as well. I'll need to go through dozens of levels before I'll be able to actually do any of this. So don't worry, Toadette, I'm coming for you. Secondly, I'll need to collect any and all treasure along the way. Each level contains three gems, so I'll need to make sure that I collect each one in every level in order to ensure this game's true completion. Ideally, once I rescue Toadette, we'll be filthy, stinking rich. We can buy gold fountains and golden chain chomps, and Wario ain't got sh on any of that. Next up, each level has a bonus challenge that must be cleared. These challenges consist of beating levels without taking a hit, or defeating all the enemies on a stage, finding the golden mushroom, getting certain coins, so on and so forth. But I think it's safe to say that I'll be playing some of these levels quite a few different times in order to successfully clear each mission. And lastly, new to the Nintendo Switch version, but in addition to the Wii U version via Amiibo, I'll have to find an 8-bit Toad in a game of hide and seek on each and every level. So, in addition to having to locate three different gems on each level, I'll have to rotate the camera and find some sort of pixelated toad somewhere on each of the game's maps. By comparison, this objective doesn't sound too terrible, and huh, yeah, that's not bad at all. Find an 8-bit toad in a game of hide and seek? I can do that. They may as well call me Gerard Toad Finder Khalil. So that's what it takes these days to become successful. Well, if my life's anything like Captain Toad, I imagine that my own road to success should be pretty simple too. Step one, play as Captain Toad. Step two, look for treasure. Step three, uh, step four, profit. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker is still as joyful as I remember it being. Completing the game never felt too tiresome, as each level still stands out from one another due to consistently clever ideas and very fun mechanics. The story of Captain Toad is about as simple as any other Mario game. Captain Toad and Toadette are out treasure hunting together when, all of a sudden, a giant bird snatches Toadette away after she clings onto a piece of treasure. It's up to Captain Toad to save both her and the treasure. Now, the idea of a Mario game's plot getting started by some random character getting kidnapped is not unheard of. However, more often than not, the average Mario character tends to fight back almost immediately. The problem with Captain Toad, however, is that he can't really, well, fight. In fact, Captain Toad can't even jump. Oh what, you thought it was the headlamp that separated this toad from all the other toads in the universe? Nuh uh, it's really the backpack that makes him different than everyone else. According to the developers, the reason Captain Toad can't jump is because his backpack is just too heavy. The gameplay of Captain Toad is very simple. You can walk around and occasionally pick up and throw items. He's not a very quick character, but I'd like to think that that's just because he's taking his time to look for all that treasure. Otherwise, that's it. That's actually it. It's the same basic controls as a Mario game, minus a jump button. But I think that works for the better, because the game's main goal is to have players solve puzzles and locate treasures. And the game's minimal variety in Captain Toad's movement seems to work in its favor. Sacrificing a jump button means that developers and designers were allowed to be more creative with their puzzle designs. Granted, the levels would be far too easy if I could just jump over half of the things there. But it just makes me wonder what Captain Toad's true motivations are if he won't even take off his bag when one of his friends are in danger. All I'm saying is, maybe this guy shouldn't be your role model at home. And unlike the Captain Toad levels in Super Mario 3D World, these levels don't have a time limit. Sure, there are some time-based challenges that occur later on in the game, but the main goal of the game is to just get players to think. Each level ends once Captain Toad obtains a Power Star, but before Captain Toad collects the Power Star, the player must navigate each level and locate any extra treasures and collectibles. Each level has three collectibles known as Super Gems, and each 
Each level has a set objective that must be cleared in order to achieve 100% completion. These objectives are pretty straightforward. You know, beat the level without taking a hit, defeat a certain number of enemies. But the problem with this game is that you don't get to see what the objective is up front. In order to complete the game, you need to beat a level at least once first, ideally with all of the collectibles. And only then will you see what a level's secret objective is. Then, after you clear the objective, you will then be given the opportunity to locate the 8-bit toad in a game of hide and seek. So essentially, I'm playing these levels three times a pop in order to complete the game. Luckily, these hide and seek missions are super easy. It was almost a joke how easy it was to find this pixelated toad each and every time. I mean, I didn't really think that these missions would be difficult, but they were way easier than I thought they were. For the most part, the game isn't difficult at all. And once you've solved the puzzle once, replaying a level again isn't too tedious. But I do wish that this structure would have changed. I made the same complaint when I completed the Wii U version, and I still stand by this. It's just a shame to see that this did not change. And folks, there's 79 levels in this game. 79. I'd normally commend a game for having so much content, but this just feels like such a cheap shot to extend the game's playtime like this. The Wii U and Switch versions of the game are mostly the same. The game did get upscaled in quality quite a bit, but the levels are the exact same. That is except for four new levels that have been added to the game. These levels are based on Super Mario Odyssey, and they're supposed to help tie in Captain Toad's adventures here to his cameo appearances in Odyssey. But unfortunately, these levels actually replaced four other levels that were based on Super Mario 3D World. Initially, there were four extra levels in the Wii U version that connected Captain Toad's personal adventures to his appearance in 3D World, but those levels have since been retconned with these Odyssey-based ones. So even though these are new levels, they replaced four other levels. I don't really get why they couldn't just add these levels on top of everything else, especially when I feel almost certain that Super Mario 3D World will probably be ported to Switch at some point anyway. It just feels like such a weird, unnecessary trade-off. I love both of these Mario games. Why does Captain Toad have to choose one and friend zone the other? Another significant change, which is good or bad depending on how you choose to play the game, was the controls. I'm obviously not using a gamepad to play this game anymore, so Nintendo had to get creative with the way that touch controls were incorporated into the game. And I gotta say, just for the record, this game was not meant to be played with a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. Considering that this game was originally meant to be played with the Nintendo Wii U gamepad, it makes sense that the Switch's handheld mode would be the most optimal way to play the game. But in order to capture footage for the game, I played the game with a pro controller. And let me just say, that was a big mistake. With Joy-Cons, this idea plays out much better than it sounds. However, the pro controller and motion controls don't really mesh that well. Whenever I played the game with Joy-Cons, the reticle on the screen was usually responsive. If I wanted to move an object, I would just point at it and press A. And the idea of using a Joy-Con as a Wiimote without the need to hook up some sort of motion sensor bar is a novel idea to me. It's just a shame that the pro controller doesn't quite translate this idea as well. Especially for me, because I find the Pro Controller to be the most comfortable option for most Switch games. The game's overall presentation is that of a storybook, and each level serves as a chapter. It's a fun touch, as everything kind of feels like an adventure log for Captain Toad, and each objective just feels like you're checking off Captain Toad's to-do list. As I completed more and more of the game, it was pretty cool to actually flip through the pages and see all the levels that I completed. And you can really see that the devs and designers really want Captain Toad to take off. Levels are still bright and colorful, and the game still managed to get me constantly smiling while I solved all of its puzzles. Although each level is based on a boxed garden, it's still really fun to see some of the game's other themed levels that break the game's conventions a bit. The boss fights were also still as fun as I remember them being. It is kind of a shame that some of the game's shock value to me is gone, as this is my second time completing it after all. The game has a lot of those moments where you think the game is over, but in reality, it's revealed that you're not even close to completing the game. Normally, that's fun, but it's kind of unfortunate that I already know the twist. But I do have to say, rediscovering and relearning this game's puzzles was quite joyous and mirthful. But don't you think I forgot about the time trial challenges. Once you've defeated an entire chapter, the game 
adds another reason to play the other levels. With the added content, that means you're playing each level four times. That equates to 316 levels this time around. Once again, these time trials aren't that bad. One or two of them may be an issue for some, but at the end of the day, they're not really worth it. And also, Hey devs, just pointing it out there. If you're gonna have a challenge, maybe you should use something to brighten the font on the screen. That's supposed to be a challenge time? Luckily, the star indicates that you did in fact beat those time trials. If you take all the original content of Captain Toad, combine it with the amiibo content for the Wii U, add and subtract the Mario 3D worlds and Mario Odyssey levels, and what you have is a very fun package, but with a lot of extra unnecessary padding. I had a lot of fun replaying this game once again, but some other things kept popping up that reminded me of, I like this game a lot, but this thing is just kind of weird and out of place. Coins. Why am I collecting so many coins? I can't use them to buy anything. I just hoard them. They give me lives, sure, but I have unlimited lives anyway. There's these little mini games that involve you getting more coins for lives or whatever. And while they are a great break, the coins are for nothing. At the very least, I hope this game sells well on the 3DS and the Switch. I would love to see a sequel to this game, and I'd love to see Captain Toad get a full-on series like Luigi or Wario. It'd be cool to see Captain Toad too, or Captain Toad. Well, whatever it is, I'd love to see it. After you've completely got everything in the game, the true final challenge awaits for you in the Endless Mummy Maze Challenge, which actually isn't endless. 50 floors of playtime, baby. Random procedurally generated levels appear in this game. And while the enemy patterns may be familiar every few floors, every layout is in fact different. But honestly, doing this wasn't too bad. It only took about two hours for me to get a handle on it, but I did have a pretty big problem here that stopped it from being a fun time. The Pro Controller. I'm telling you, it stopped me dead in my tracks several times. It was so hard to use, I turned on the two-player Joy-Con mode and beat it that way. Some will argue that was easier to do, but honestly, I thought it was more difficult, but still very much fun. It was a more exciting way to play because it's kind of using the Joy-Cons as a left brain, right brain function. Doing that challenge once again reminded me of a rush that you can only get when doing something as big as a marathon like that. For when you finally beat it, you are knighted with the king's crown. And any level you play going forward with Toad or Toadette will have them wearing the crown. It is kind of a fun completion bonus, but it's kind of like bragging rights, I guess? But bragging rights to whom? At least you do get something for your troubles. However, it's also kind of weird that having everything overall completed, including the new edition of Hide and Seek 8-Bit Toads and the Mario Odyssey levels, leads to nothing new or exciting. You just have a nice crown and a pretty long book of your adventures. Ultimately, there's just not enough major additions to the Switch version to warrant any Wii U owners to purchase this game again. While the Odyssey base levels are fun, they're merely substitute for 3D world levels. With that said, if you don't have Captain Toad on the Wii U, this game is definitely worth it. It's only 40 bucks, and having the option to play the game on the go is definitely a bonus, especially considering that the game feels like it was meant for handheld mode anyway. While I completed Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, there were 79 levels explored at least four times each. Four episodes cleared, including the bonus Mario Odyssey episodes. 297 super gems collected. 45 hours of total playtime. 50 floors conquered in the endless mummy maze challenge, which led me to one golden crown. And one backpack that Captain Toad just refuses to let go. Come on, man. What's in the bag? Couple of tools, another toad. I'm pretty sure that some things are more important than your backpack. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker was a delightful game to re-experience. And if you did not pick up the game on the Wii U, then I definitely recommend it. Each level just gleams with creativity and innovation. And I gotta imagine the designers had a blast putting these levels together. With regards to completing the game, however, I'm not sure if the game is worth completing fully. Yes, the game would only be about a third of its overall length without them, and the game is already pretty short as it is. And the rewards they give you at the end of the road just aren't worth your efforts. I guess the risk of completion varies based on what type of treasure hunting you like. Do you like actual treasure hunting? Or do you like the story of getting to the treasure? But at the very least, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker is a game I'll always treasure anyways.
Captain Toad Treasure Tracker is an excellent game through and through. It plays fantastic on the Switch, however, I'd only recommend playing it in handheld mode. Playing with the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller was not the way that I intended to do it, and the Joy-Cons, yeah, definitely go that route or play with a friend. The co-op is an awesome time. As a completionist though, the rewards just weren't there to satisfy my needs for going all the way with this game. Last time we played this game on the show, we gave it the rating of Finna Pete It. We no longer do half ratings, so with that in mind guys, I give this game my new completionist rating of Finish It. Finish It. That's all the time we have for today, guys. So please, as always, let me know what you thought about today's episode somewhere on the internet. If you like the show, you like hanging around with me, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, click or tap that bad boy right now on screen. And hey, if you want to check out last week's episode of The Completionist, you can click or tap that right here on the screen as well. Guys, I've been Gerard. Let me know what you want to see next on the show. And I'll see you next time for another brand new episode. Bye.